It's a great one. I'm, I'm like, get a box of tissues. Not for those reasons. Get a box of tissues. <laughs> do you are like, <laughs> it's not sufficient. But this like, is a get family a show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so today we're talking about an emotional drama from Olivier Payon. It is called Lie With Me. And look who's back after his jollies. It's Sean. Hi. Have you time? You say time don't want to be back. <laughs> I'm like, yay. I'm actually yay for this, seeing you in this film, but I'm generally not yay for being back in the UK and it's Mizog. But um, yay for you, Phil. <laughs> yay to not being in the UK. Yay for not being in the UK. But yay to being that. gay. Yay to being gay. Yay to this film. Yay to seeing you. Yay actually to this book, which is called Reach for the Stars. Um, Have you heard about-, about the new single? The new single's uh, written by Kathy Dennis. Legendary. Legendary. It's going to be a banger. But that book's very good. Um, can I just say? And it is an absolute beast. It's 520 pages of pure pop. But it is brilliant. And everything between the 90s and noughties. That's making me happy. You're making me happy. The UK is not making me happy. <laughs> well, we can change that. We can we can turn that frown upside down after a little chat. <laughs> All right, preschool teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about S Club, by the way. I don't know if that book's kind of. I'm guessing it oh, does mention S Club. It's amazing. Honestly, yeah. my, some of my favourite things were like Signed Sugar Babes. They all got three thousand pounds each, and then it was a multi million pound deal. Like they just rinse those kids. Those poor kids. They like wear them out so they're on the edge of like breaking up. And then they're like, break up. We made squillions, and you made five p. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically the whole book. Which is like, oh, I got a hundred pounds a week, and I was signing on the dole, but I was famous. And a lot of people will learn from that, I think, that story. Well, that maybe model, not, actually. That model is kind of gone. I go, although the kids these days do the same through streaming and through, like, you know, like, this kind of stuff, where they're like, oh, I made £8 this month. Spotify have just bumped up the prices, haven't they, as well, the subscription prices. I suggested that Spotify have paid to this thing where they now can use AI to read books, so they actually don't need to hire someone. It's just disgusting. I should say congratulations and happy anniversary. Thank you. Five years. Yeah. Um, five years. Yeah. So we've been together eight years, married for five years. It's all very gorgeous and lovely. We had a really, we went somewhere where they don't like gays and we were really gay. But what they do like is money. So if you turn it with some money, they don't give a shit. So, uh, <laughs> so where did you go? Did you have a nice time? We were, Presumably we were, in, you did. We were in the rather glamorous Indian Ocean and we want to do something quite special, you know, for five years. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was gorgeous. And do you know what? They were really lovely and we just flamed about and didn't really give a shit. I saw there was one video of you serving <laughs> breakfast in a swimming pool. <laughs> like you had like this inflatable tray like of manger. drinks. They mean like a manger. And we were like, can we have the thing? And they brought the thing. And it is like, it's really funny because loads of like straight girls in couples do Instagrams of it like like this. Like, oh, it's so good. It's the most awkward thing to eat out of. So it's this manger with like an orange juice on it and a coffee and like a croissant. And you're like, great, I'm now in a swimming pool with a manger that's probably there up to my chin. So what am I like going to lean over the edge of this manger and eat like a pan of chocolate? No, but influencer girls fucking love it i was like this is pointless we put it on a table <laughs> <laughs> it's a look <laughs> it's a it looks as i said insta gray actually impossible to eat off so we're talking about a uh drama an emotional drama very powerful film from olivier payon it's based on a novel have you read the book i have not read the book uh, the best-selling novel was by Philippe Besson. And I should say, from the offset, um, this is not to be confused with the Channel 5 drama starring Janine from EastEnders, which was... Correct, it's not that. Or two Lie years ago. To Me. There's another no. Lie With Me, and it's not Lie To Me, but it is Lie With Me. So let's talk about that title to start with then. <laughs> lie With Me. I went in thinking, okay, it's Lie With Me as in Lie, lie Down, Lay Down Alongside Me. But actually, there's a double meaning, I think, because it's all, also lie with me as in tell fibs with me. Exactly. Exactly. It's double meaning. Um, and I think that plays out through the story. It's quite a clever play on words. Yeah, I thought it was a really clever title, actually, because it got me thinking. And also it was unexpected. Yeah, very clever. Well done. 
Would they? <laughs> <laughs> now you can be the teacher. <laughs> well done, everyone, with your wordplay. You're so smart, A Star. It's set in Cognac, which is famous for this film and Cognac. And it follows the story of um, Stefan, who grew up in Cognac and became an author and left and his lover, Thomas. The plot kind of jumps between the two of them being together as teenagers and the current storyline, which is um, a distillery in Cognac are having their bicentennial and they've asked Stefan to come back because he is famous from the region and they want him to do like a keynote talk and you know, talk about his history of Cognac and whatever. He's quite a famous, uh, quite a famous author. Um, so really what you see is Stefan returning back, I think almost uncomfortably, because I think he has these memories of like growing up there and not being able to be himself. And he's very much out and proud, gay man, um, returning to this to this place, which is his home, but not really anymore, um, to celebrate something that I think he's been like, okay, I'll do it. Um, and through that, um, it kind of stirs and stimulates um, his past with Thomas and we meet people within the plot who are connected to Thomas and it begins um, I guess the origin or the base of the film about um, their relationship, their relationship with Cognac as, as a place and also with Thomas's family. And it captured that so brilliantly I thought because you know when you revisit a place maybe somewhere you went to college or somewhere you've grown up and you kind of go back and you realize that it's not really the same place because you've moved on as a person you've moved on and obviously you don't know people that still live there so it kind of captured that isolation in a way quite well I thought um but you mentioned about the time and how it you know flips back and then is current and then kind of talks about the now but also the past is really relevant and obviously important to him as, as the protagonist. I thought it did that really well without it being jarring because I think some films that do that, they, fl they flip between time. It does kind of bring you out of the film, but for this, I, I thought it didn't. And also, I believe that they were the same people. Obviously, yeah. they're different actors, but I think I think the casting was really good in this. Yeah. I thought the continuity was very good. I like the fact that there were moments that Stefan and Thomas shared together that Thomas then shared with his son and so you get these moments of repetition about areas and places in Cognac that Thomas loved that he shared with people that he loved and I quite like that because that carried through quite nicely. It is a tale as old as time you know you've got one person who is in the closet doesn't feel comfortable to come out um, their family situation isn't great um, and really what follows through is them pining after the happiness they had as a youngster and living almost a life that's not their own um, because they live in this small town, they're not accepted, they, have, they are riddled with shame uh, and guilt and therefore, you know, you get this very, you know, the, even though the origin story is the same for Stefan and, and um, Thomas, what you see is them diverge over time as you know, Stefan goes and explores his life and, and he's comfortable with who he is and living his life and Thomas less so. So Stefan is played by, and forgive me if I don't get this right, you could probably do a better job than me. Is it Gu Guillaume? Guillaume. Guillaume de Tonkadec. Tonkadec, yeah, Tonkadec. He's yeah. terrific. He's so good in this. In <laughs> fact, the whole cast I thought were superb. And I think they played these roles with... To me, it felt like they played these roles with real passion and an understanding of the characters in the novel. And I was going to say also that I think people who love the novel will kind of think that this movie does it justice. I haven't read the book, so I can't tell I can't tell you that whether you know I thought it did, but I think that people will be pleased with the adaptation. It's very special this movie because it has it's not fast paced at all. It kind of plods along, but that kind of adds to its charm and the depth yeah. of the characters. He's expected Stefan to give this keynote speech about his life, him, his writing, the impact of Cognac. And I won't, I won't give any spoilers, but the speech that he gives at the end about his life is what had me absolutely floored and in floods of tears. Yeah, me and my too. husband watched it separately and was like, oh my God, the ending of that film. Like, it absolutely floored me. 
Um, and that closing shot as well, without saying what that is, the closing shot is a hark back, but it's done so powerfully and so simply in a way, even though that cu- kind of doesn't really do it justice. It It's a simple shot, but it's well-placed and they know exactly well what they're doing. And, yeah. and, and look, for people that li- watch this channel with us, you know, you know, we talk a lot about queer films. We talk a lot about this narrative and this plot line. This was very special, very unique. I say it was so well placed. They did some very subtle, nuanced, clever things with the filming and with the placement that really struck a chord. You know? I was just going to say that because to me, this film sums up the word evocative. The, the word evocative kind of does describe this film and you mentioned the nuances. They're, they're so intricate and so sensitive but powerful as well at the same time. I just think in the wrong hands, this could have been quite clunky. Yeah. And I think we've seen films before where we've been a bit like, it's not believable. And it's, I just say, so evocative and so moving. It really did blow me away as a movie. Like, and it's, you know, it's one of those that could pass you by. So I'm saying, if you see, if you get a chance to see this, get your hands on it and watch it because it's a very, very special movie. Absolutely. And I think there have been comparisons to Call Me By Your Name. I think this is a much better film in a lot of ways. I, I enjoy Call Me By Your Name, but I think I think I enjoyed this a lot more. I don't know. I just think Army Hammer's miscast. I've said it for a thousand yes, years. Yes, right, totally. But, but this, and so I like Call Me By Your Name, but it's, it for me, it stutters along, whereas this is so fluid and easy and lands and you feel connected to it um, and drawn in without, you're not being, you're not pulled out of you're not pulled out of disbelief at any point you're like i'm really in this and it feels very very real and very very vulnerable um and so yeah it's a great one i'm, I'm like get a box of tissues not for those reasons get a box of tissues because <laughs> you are like <laughs> it's not fishing, but this like, is a get family a show <laughs> yeah. it's not like uh, de Mec, but it is very very emotional this film and it's one of those things that just builds and builds and builds and builds it actually a little bit like after sun you know in after sun where you're watching after sun and all of a sudden you're crying and you're like why am i crying i don't know yeah. why i'm crying and it's just built i got the same with this which just slowly took me along this emotional story and suddenly i was like i'm actually quite emotional yeah yeah um, without it being this like here's the here's the punchline that's supposed to like be gut-wrenching it really took you on a journey yeah i think after sun was my favorite film of last year i i thought it was superb and um, also i should say i adore the lady who runs around welcoming stefan oh, as well at yeah, the she's, story. she's so good i think her name is Ghislaine londes G- G- uh, G- uh, G- uh, G- again pronunciation is terrible so apologies but yeah I, I a very touching it. scene where she's um discovering a lot of personal details from Stefan. And, and it's, again, like you say, a very vulnerable scene where they're sat in the kitchen and they're having a drink and it's very late at night and he's kind of opening up to her and he's very upset about what's happened. Um, I thought that scene was terrific. One of the standout scenes, I thought, um, along with what happens towards the end. And that, you know, again, that's his, oh, the favourite bit is at the end. It's not, it's great all the way through. It does work from oh, the no, start. It's great all the way through. And it's really touching. And it's got, it's kind of like, I'd say, it's got a great pace there's moments all the way through which are kind of revelations and as part of their story you just it, it builds to the end rather than it just being the end and i think we've seen a lot of those films you know feel well it's like ticks long ticks long oh here's the wham bam ending to try and get you to feel emotional feel something this film is different it's weaved and layered within the whole film so when you get to the end you are you are a bit of an emotional wreck but it's not because of the ending it's just because of your you're really bought into the characters that are in this story it's a five star for me i i was really won over by it i thought it was sensitive thought it was powerful brilliantly acted directed i thought the casting was great again you know 100 percent for me i thought it just ticked all the boxes and it was very moving and i that final scene i just can't forget it was so so intricate and so brilliant and yeah i loved it sometimes i think i'm a bit desensitized by these films because we watch so many of them you know, so I'm often a bit like, yeah, it's this story, it's this plot, or yeah, 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 it's this trope, it's this whatever. So when films like this come along, where you go, oh, it's going to be the same or whatever, and it knocks your socks off, that's special because we watch so many films that are kind of right in the middle. And so for me, I'm also a five star on this because it's absolutely came out of nowhere, knocked my socks off. 
Amazing. So it's called Lie With Me. It is released in UK and Irish cinemas from the 18th of August. You can go and see it. And, you know, we watched it on the small screen, but I would love to see it on the big screen because I think it feels very... It does mm. feel very cinematic because it's such a powerful story, and I think it would be great with the you know audio bit and with a crowd as well because I think it'd be quite nice to see it with other people that get it. Just a cinema full of people sobbing. Yeah, with their Kleenex, <laughs> <laughs> but not for that reason. But not for that. It's not one of those weird. It's a quiz, then. <laughs> so, so you mentioned After Sun. Uh, if you want to check out a review of that, I mean, we didn't do it together. I did it with Raj, but I think you have the same sentiment about that. Oh film. my god, After Sun just literally put me into like a shredder. Like, ultimately, I've seen it twice now. And like, if someone said, "Do you want to watch it?" I'd be like, "Yes." Like, yeah. oh my god, that film. Oh, it's god, so god. good. It's so good. But you can watch our review on the screen. Bizarrely, Raj didn't like it as much as... I mean, I gave it five stars. I think he gave it two, weirdly. I think I would give it five stars. And, you know, I am a hard marker. But, like, it's the scene where he's dancing in the club. And it's towards the end. And he's dancing. And then at one point, she's hugging him. Yeah. And I can't remember what's playing. Is it Changes by David Bowie? I think but, it is. I've got goosebumps. It literally, the I literally, <laughs> a puddle. I was like, it, I, but again, it built to that point. Cause you're like, I'm dealing with the fact that he has got, you know, depression and mental health issues. She doesn't realize this because she's a young girl. She's looking back at it and she sees all the telltale signs about how, what it was and how it could help. And it all comes together in that moment. And I was literally like, put me in a shredder. Put me Do you know what that, that reminded me? I thought that was like a ballet at the end. I thought it was so clever how they wove that into the film because the rest of the film isn't like that. But then that final scene, it feels really kind of choreographed, but not in a clunky way. It, it get you know, it does oh, fit. You know, the, the rest. second time around, I got so much more. No, I didn't get so much more. That's that's incorrect. I got different things, like when she is. She sees the two guys kiss. I mean, she's a lesbian or she's bisexual. She sees the two guys kissing, and you realise that that you know she's a lesbian when she grows up. And there's a moment where she sees she sees something when she's on holiday, and it resonates. Or like the pile of books that's next to the TV screen when he's talking, and one of them is like Tai Chi, and one of them is like being mindful. And they're all the things as adults. You're like, oh, why is he? Why does he want to be mindful? Why does he need to be grounded? All these things kind of come through the second time I was watching it. Like, oh my god, it's so rich and so layered amazing yeah so fantastic you can check out our review on screen uh thank you everybody for watching thank you sean we'll do it again soon with another film just hopefully rattle on about all one. sorts then honestly just join us for us to rattle on about all sorts of books and old films you've seen and gay cinemas and kleenex <laughs> and you've got to join tiktok <laughs> i'm telling you off now because you need to be on there i'm just not sure i'm not gonna do that <laughs> Don't be one of those people that says, I'm too old for TikTok. I'm not, it's not about age. I'm just trying to like minimize screen time. Now that we signed up for threads. <laughs> no, I'm on threads. <laughs> Good to see you, Shauna. Thank you, everybody. See you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. subscribe. Do it, please. Now.